Welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Today we have two guests, to both Swansea residents. We have Colleen Brown, who is going to be the from the Wampanoag Kettle Club, who is going to discuss uh, rally and to obedience trials, and Gail Zorowski, who is the chairman of the Wampanoag Kettle Club's obedience. Okay, welcome, ladies. Thank How you. Are Thank you. you. Okay, first of all, Gail, can you start? Tell us about how you started in obedience. I had a cocker spaniel that pulled me down a flight of stairs, and I said I had to do something with it. And that was a long time ago. That was Gretchen. She was a potty cocker, and I almost went flying on my head because, as much as they're not the biggest dogs in the world, they're strong. And so then I got into it and fell in love with it, and this is my. You've been active in the sport of obe in the obedience. You've had several award-winning dogs. Oh God, yes, all of them. This one's just coming out. She's coming out and open in a couple of weeks, which is retrieving and coming over the high jumps and whatnot. Woofy got two. He was my little. He's my little boy. He's eleven and a half now. He's got two high in trials, and even all my other ones, my. Um, Las Opso got a high in trial at the Las Opso specialty, and this is all in obedience. That's all I do is obedience. Very and good. I, I really enjoy it. Where do you go with your dogs? You take them to obedience trials. Where, where have you traveled to? Most of my travels are fairly local. A few years ago, I did go up to New Hampshire, but um, <clears throat> now for the most part, it's in Taunton or up in um, Franklin, um, sometimes in Rainham and the Cape. And you are, are also the you as the chairman of the obedience right. department. I Can you tell us about what you do, how that works? The people call me or email me and I set them up to join the next class. Like our next class we have starting now is on December 12th. And so far December? I think I've got, uh, not December, September 12th, boy, it's too hot for that. Um, September 12th, I think I've got seven or eight dogs lined up and they have to call, set it up with me, send me a down payment and find out what kind of dog it is inside because we have a lot of rescue dogs these days. So we have to get a general idea of what they might be. Now these dogs don't problems. have to be purebred, do they? Oh no, no. We teach them, we t in the beginner's class, they were in strictly house manners. How to be a well-mannered dog. Correct. And they can earn a degree, can't they? Yes, they, they can. They can earn all the degrees. They can do their CGC. They can do their novice, beginner novice, anything. And they do not have to be neutered or spayed. And they don't have to be a purebred. This has changed. I know 30 <laughs> years ago, when I, almost 40 years ago, <laughs> yep. when I became very interested in dogs, things have, cha things have changed significantly. Mm -hmm. Colleen, what do you, can you tell us about the Wampanoag Kennel Club trial? What's coming up? Yes, the Wampanoag Kennel Club trial is something, um, there's always been a trial at our Wampanoag show, um, which was in June, um, but it was because it was very hot it wasn't well that well attended. Um, so when I became chairman of the trial, I moved it to an indoor facility um, in Taunton, the Silver City Training Center. Um, and there we have two rings. We have two days, two, uh, one trial, one day of two trials of rally and two days of obedience, which will go through all of the different levels of obedience. Um, in each of the, you know, each, each person, uh, or we call it a team, um, that usually there are probably between 275 and 325 teams that show during the weekend. They have, some of them may be repeating and some have come from as far as New Jersey and Pennsylvania um, to come to our trial. Um, it's usually a good fun time uh, for people and we do get a lot of um, dogs that are not um, AKC registerable as the purebred dogs. Um, 
and there but now there is the new what is called all american dog um, and what that is for any dog that is some sort of mix um, there also are rescue dogs and if a dog is a purebred rescue um, such as my Mackenzie here who's an irish wolfhound um, she will she actually has what's called a uh, purebred alternative listing so that she would have to be spayed or neutered the canine partners dogs would have to be spayed or neutered to compete but um, basically she can go into any trials um, of a number of different play different events of the, the AKC and the AKC has expanded its performance events um, over the past 10 years so when rally came in probably around 2004 we were the first one of the first groups um, involved with Rally because I, I fell in love with it for an Irish Wolfhound. Um, and then from Rally, they've expanded to, uh, well, they've always had um, a, a free, free uh, fly ball. Fly ball is And agility, popular. and agility, which is very popular. <laughs> um, and now they've added in barn hunt and uh, earth dog, scenting, um, a form of coursing, which is a wolfhound, usually wolfhound or sighthound uh, event, um, and a number of different other things. So anybody who has a dog, um, and the dog, whether the, if they're purebred and they have their AKC registration, they can enjoy, they can enjoy this, uh, or well as in, uh, register with the AKC for um, with a, an alternative listing or a canine partners listing and then they can all compete in this. Um, when I was a kid, I used to train my dog, dogs all the time, but you had to have a purebred dog to do that, and most of my dogs were rescues. So um, what I think now is a wonderful opportunity for children who are interested in their dogs, because uh, working with your dog um, makes a great team for you. You get exercise. Um, they get exercise and there's a bonding that goes on because the dog is with you for a certain you know, amount of time every day and is looking forward to working with you. Some dogs prefer some of the things better than others and you always have to look at what kind of breed that you have in order to determine what they might be interested in. Um, so there are some wolfhounds that are be now being shown in agility but the tunnels that they have to go through can be kind of tough. Um, the um, Rally is very good for wolfhounds um, because it keeps make them af active. Rally is a course that is set up by the judge. Um, there are now 55 different c commands that you have to give and each w command will be at a station and you will follow this course and at each station you will do a different command with your dog. And you are uh, judged on whether or not you've, you're dragging your dog around or whether there is a tight leash or whether the dog is complying with you. Um, my Mackenzie here, um, who is a rescue wolfhound, um, was actually, is very good in rally, and she actually, uh, we went to the first rally national competition um, in uh, Pennsylvania. We were invited to that because of her scores. And so she's the first wolfhound, and so far the only wolfhound who has gone to that competition. People are amazed at the number of events. There, there's something for everyone. And, and they're going on all, every week. There's something there's going something. on. And, and there's not only the AKC trials. Then you also have ASCA, Australian Shepherd Club of America, uh, which has obedience, agility, and uh, rally. And then you have CDV, CDSP, CDSP, which is companion dogs. Sport sporting. Something. <laughs> Pro program. Program, okay. And um, that also has different levels of uh, obedience. Um, so you, c you can be anywhere on any weekend and going to a trial. There are, tr and I I'm reading down the list here, there are even events for trick dogs. Oh, yeah, that, that's new. That is something new. Yeah. Do you know, have you? No. Any, <laughs> what do you have any idea about what? Trick dog, is, trick dog is that you have. Um, there, for the for trick dog novices, that there are ten different tricks that you have to teach your dog. One of them is simple: is give your paw, um, or a high five, or do a spin. And then, as you get, it gets more complicated as you go along. Um, I'm also a um, 
canine good citizen uh, evaluator. So when they do the managed programs, that will people will be allowed to achieve or can achieve possibly a canine good citizen uh, title on the, their dog. Um, and then they also have th two other different levels. There's a canine good citizen community, um, as well as the third, which is talking about going into buildings and going on elevators and stuff like that. Um, so we've done, um, K Kenzie here has both her canine good citizen, canine good citizen uh, community titles. Um, she also has a beginner novice, which is the first level of novice, uh, basic obedience. Um, her uh, two legs of her CD companion dog title, um, and she has, um, and she has those both in Ra Alley, uh, AKC and ASCA, Australian Shepherd Club of America. I think she's probably one of the only Irish wolfhounds in the Australian Shepherd Club of America, um, and we since we're eight, number one. And we have the only cocker spaniel. Yeah. <laughs> and she has her CGCA and CGCC. She also has her beginner novice. She has her CD, and she's working on her CDX now. But in the meantime, we're also already teaching her utility. Which so is both of these dogs are members of the well-educated set. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's interesting because I recently attended my Irish Wolfhound regional show. What was and, that like? And that was, there were a hundred different Irish Wolfhounds um, attending. And, and these were m primarily, if not all, confirmation dogs. And I could go through and it, the crowd with her at my side on a loose leash and she never left my side, whereas a lot of these other people were being dragged around. Now, Kenzie's a small Irish wolfhound. Um, she's 31 inches tall and about 100 pounds. Some of these dogs were uh, 38, 39 inches tall to their shoulders and 185 to 225 pounds. So you can imagine that this dog has an awful, long, uh, awful lot of strength to, and is easily dragging their owners around unless the drone owner has them uh, obedience trained. And people were amazed at, at how well she did. There are 187 or 88 dog breeds eligible now. Right. And you this stuff I had never heard of before. And, but there are a lot of them interesting breeds. A lot of European breeds are coming in. And they're very interesting breeds. And they're yeah. very rare. Right. Right, there's clubs usually for all the new stuff, uh, new breeds that are coming in that they're trying to get them established. Um, the Pumi, which is a very cute little sheep herding dog, um, is, uh, everybody who's looked at it has fallen in love with it because it looks like it would be a cartoon character <laughs> um, with its ears and everything else. Um, and there's another dog called the Leonberger, which was actually developed in the 1880s in Germany, which is sort of looking like a brown Newfoundland. Um, but the head is slightly different. The Amer Newfoundland is an American breed. Um, this one's a German breed. Um, and, but they, are, they have this big, massive brown coat. Um, but they don't have the heavy flus like in Newf Newfoundland, which cause all the drool. So that, that would be my alternative breed if I would ever get one. But right now you're... Right now, yeah, I'm on... Um, with the, the Irish Wolfhounds. Irish Wolfhounds, and um, I just... I, I, the problem with wolfhounds and, um, is that they don't uh, last very long. Um, at six, I usually have to start worrying. I've lost, of my eight wolfhounds, I've lost six to um, osteosarcoma, bone cancer. And it's because they grow so rapidly. Um, they will, at 12 weeks, they're about the size, same size as a shepherd puppy or golden retriever puppy. And then they just start exploding. Um, and they will be growing an inch a week and five pounds a week until they're about eight months old. Um, and at that point, you know, and they can grow actually up to almost two years old. So uh, it just takes a lot of stress on their bones and uh, their system. So um, they are highly susceptible to bone cancer. What advice would you give to someone who is interested in dogs? And learning more about the sport of dogs. Gail. The first thing they've got to do is do the basic obedience class. But before that, where should, where should people go looking for a good dog? 
I think that they need to look at what type of dog they want to fit their lifestyle. If you are a person that doesn't have, isn't active, you don't want to get a herding breed because they're dogs that need a lot of attention. They need a lot of uh, exercise. Um, Border Collies are like the number one dog, smartest dogs. Everybody agrees with that. Um, and you, but they are also highly um, intensive. So you don't want to have bring a dog like that into your family where you're going to worry about it getting bored and then ripping off the couch or whatever else. And, and they don't come trained. Yeah. No, and none <laughs> of them come trained. So you've and neither got to do, do Goldens. <laughs> so you've got to look at what type. If you want a dog that's going to be a lap dog, then you're looking at the toy or uh, toy breeds. Or the terriers are highly reactive because that's what they were. They were, were done there problem. for... The, you know, they were <laughs> yeah, the ratters you know. and after Corey. So they've got a high, keen sense of hearing, um, and they just hear anything and that's it. They're, they're off to do whatever it is they need to do. So they're very good for barn hunting and stuff like that, um, but they can be, you know, quite active in your house. So if, and if you're looking at a dog that's a mix of dogs, then look at what type of the mix. I mean, if you're going to rescue and it's mixed, then look at what might be in the mix because that might give you an idea of what type of dog it's going to be. Where are the local dog shows? Where can people find a, 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 dog, a dog show? Um, a dog show confirmation, um, there's usually, I think, three or four, three or four up in Rentham um, throughout the year. Um, Springfield has probably the bulk of them at the Eastern uh, States Exposition. Um, they usually will do four-day weekends. Um, and then there is the, um, and then there are other hotel areas that actually might have a hotel, uh, uh, confirmation. If, if you're talking about obedience, um, then there are the local training centers that Gail had talked about for going. Um, and then uh, there's not too much going outside right now. Um, and then there is, if you're going into agility, I, I know there's a huge one going to be happening at the what, Wide World of Sports up in Smithfield yep. for agility. Um, so, and agility will attract, you know, over three, four hundred uh, teams because it's so popular. And it's a lot of fun to watch. If you have never seen an agility trial, you're just amazed at how fast these dogs are going over the jumps and just the signals that the owners are giving them and they immediately know which way they're going and everything else. I recently attended a uh, dock diving competition. Dock diving, yeah. And it was fascinating. Uh, yeah. People really, really got into it and they were having fun. Actually, Cape Cod um, show, which is coming up the 14th. third week, 14th, yeah, yeah. In, um, of me. September, um, they are going to have dock diving at that show. Are they? Yeah. Um, and there's a facility in Carver that you can train at with, for dock diving. They've actually built their whole pool area. Um, so for the dogs that, that are going to be good for it, um, wolfhounds are not good at swimming. So um, Madison can swim, but she's not going to dock dive. Yeah. <laughs> so it's usually, it's like a lot of... Golden Retriever, Labs, Labby, Labs uh, Chessies. Rottweilers, Chessies, um, uh, Border Collies. They, they will all love to go and dock dive. Um, and I'm looking down the, the list here. Therapy dog mm -hmm. is a very worthwhile pursuit that a lot of people are very interested in. They are. Um, they, I guess get, earlier on um, when we were starting, when I was starting obedience and Gail was involved in it. They used to go to nursing homes a lot with. Uh, used to go. We once used to a month. take yeah. my uh, my dad. Yeah. yeah. Gail started with uh, brought your dogs I with my father I brought at Will the nursing home in yeah. Fall River. Lily. With Lily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was very very pot, and the people really loved and, it. And Sophie too, my mother's dog. I used to take I her. I remember Sophie. Yeah, the two of them used to go. Yes, when I've um, actually I brought my other dog who has since passed, uh, Chloe, with me to um, visit my sister, who's in a nursing home. Um, and she, every, uh, the residents just loved her because she was tall enough, she could put her head on their lap and they could stroke her, they could sit uh, uh, with it, and the dogs just love it. Um, there's a lot of programs now where they're actually greeting people. There was a program where they were greeting the, um, 
uh, soldiers that were coming in from yeah. uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and they would be coming into the Bangor airport. Um, and they set up a program up there for people to greet um, dogs, greet them with the dogs. And there was a woman there with an Irish wolfhound that everybody just loved. And the same with, I think, in California, there's a bunch of people that are there um, with their wolfhounds and just easing people's um, tension. I know once I had gone into a doctor's office and I was really scared, as we usually are, um, and then as soon as they walked in with a Sheltie therapy dog, that's it, I just calmed down. Willie, there was a man in a wheelchair, a big guy, at a nursing home in New Bedford, and she would walk in there and she would run and just jump up in his lap and sit there. And he was thrilled to death. He, he'd wait, he'd wait, where is she, where is she? And I'd be, she's coming. You throw a ball and they'd go get the ball and they'd bring the ball back to the person It evokes a lot of it. wonderful, pleasant memories oh, for a lot of people. Unbel one guy, she was laying down with him and he said, come back in an hour. He wanted her to just stay there. But this one would be a super therapy dog. Mm -hmm. Because she, lo she loves everybody. But you also have to have a dog that's not, that's fairly calm. <coughs> so it's not going to be running, you know, if somebody drops a chair, a table, a cloth, or, some, or something that's going to make a racket, the dog is not like jumping up screaming and, you know, running around. So it, ta it takes a lot of, you've got to figure out what type of dog you have and whether you can do that or not. Um, and usually a lot of people who do the Canine Good Citizen uh, program. They also do what is called the Therapy, do Therapy Dog International program, which mm -hmm. is very similar, um, but it has some events, parts of it that are like somebody crashes down a, a cart or something with all the instruments on it or mm -hmm. something, um, just to make sure the dog doesn't freak out on them. Can so I, because Wolfie. you don't want them in somebody's lap and then <laughs> having the dog freak out on you. Woofy has his Therapy Dog and his CGC. And she is very, very Content. Look at that face, that adorable. <laughs> and she's face. only three and a half. She's actually absolutely full of it. She but has a very rare color, isn't she? It's called a roan merle. Um, somebody thought that was her name once when I did a program. But it is unusual. Her mother was black with a white chest, and her father was buff colored. Um, she's a good girl. She was full of it when, when I got her at eight weeks. She's still full of it. But um, she's an absolute sweetheart. She's great with kids. She has to be those kids at the house all the time. But she's a pretty little thing. Mm. Yeah. And she is three and a half? Three and a half. <laughs> she'll be four on Halloween. <laughs> oh, she'll be the, the queen of the Halloween festival. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's a devil. She was born on a horse farm. <laughs> She is very, very beautiful. And, and she knows it. Yeah. And Mackenzie is you know, a real celebrity sleeping. as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, you know, I, I, when I had first gotten my first puppy, uh, Wolfhound, um, Swansea Mall was starting to do the Christmas with the, the photos with the dogs for Christmas. Many years ago. Many years ago. So this is 2001 when I got Abby. Um, and so I was standing there with Abby, and she was four months old, but she was the size of her. Um, and so, but all the other dogs were screaming and yelling and, you know, pulling on their leashes and everything else. And I just, she was just sitting there by my side. And so I, somebody came up and said, is she sick or something? Is there something <laughs> wrong with her? And I said, no, this is a wolfhound disposition. I said, they don't get flustered by a lot of stuff. Um, and then I happened to actually was talking to somebody at work and it turned out it was the same woman because she saw my pictures on the wall and said, oh, I remember somebody who had one of those at the Swansea Mall and I thought the dog was sick and I said, yeah, that was my dog. But it, it's nice to be able to go because I've taken them both it, together for pictures with Santa and whatnot and to be able to walk in a place with them and have them behave. I mean, you can go to Home Depot and they behave. You can go to Lowe's, you can go to quite a few places where the tractor supply loves them, but they like them to behave too. Now you started many years ago, but you started with Newfoundlands, didn't you? 
I had gotten a rescue new. I've actually had like several dogs in my life. I was brought up by a shepherd collie mix, um, and then I proceeded, and then I, I had a shepherd. Um, I've had a Belgian sheepdog, um, which was a rescue, um, a Malamute golden mix, which was a, a trip. Um, <laughs> but he was he was a nice dog. Um, and then uh, I had gotten my re my Newfoundland rescue um, probably around 2002 or 2000, um, I'm sorry, 1992, 1993. Um, and so then I, and she actually had been, come from a puppy mill in, um, she was sold to somebody who was going to breed her, but she was a small noof and she had to have C-section so she wasn't good for breeding anymore. So they just kind of dumped her. Um, and then she ended up coming out from Missouri out to New England um, and then was in an apartment and the people realized that she was not fit for the apartment. Um, so I ended up with <laughs> her. Um, and she was a great dog. Um, and she also didn't have the deep flus, which was nice because she didn't have a lot of drooling going on. Um, and then, but then I knew that I always wanted to get a wolfhound. Um, I've always loved that breed. So uh, I had the opportunity to get my first rescue wolfhound when somebody who I had had just a chance conversation with dogs about had um, and about that I always wanted a wolfhound and they had called me like two weeks later saying there was an ad in the yellow paper for somebody selling a wolfhound down in Narragansett. Um, so I went down there and the poor dog was three years old, had been taken out of a kennel that had been her only life. She was never socialized. And she ended up, um, she couldn't walk on a leash. So my sister said to me at that time, you know, you need to be able to control this dog. And she was a big girl. She was like 33 inches and 140 pounds. Um, so she ended up, uh, I said, okay, I've got to, I'll go to an obedience school with her. And that's when, when I went into, walked into that obedience school, that's when I fell in love with obedience. It's so much fun. Yeah. You meet a lot of people and you sit there at the shows and you watch your dog because you work with your dog and you say, I never do that in the class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to have a sense of humor and accept that you're not going to win every time. But you're out there, the dogs love going. Um, we, I don't think we've found any that don't like it, really. No, no, because it's something that makes, you're working with your dogs, they're there with you. So as long as they're there with you, then usually the dog is, is happy. Um, and you're happy because you've got your dog there. Um, make a good team, and you've uh, met wonderful people from all walks oh, of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. So much. You know, fun. when there's some people that are driven by that they have to score the, you know, 200 or the 100s, and then there are other people that are just happy to get their dogs to get a title. Well, I thank you, ladies, Gail and Colleen, for coming and sharing. And we're going to put your uh, some information up on the monitor for you. Uh, hopefully you'll come uh, learn more and want to learn more about dog shows and hopefully you'll come and attend one of our events. Thank you very much for coming. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.